and just like feeding that heat to the hoop. The easiest hinge ever. Our file would have something to grab on and not to slide in all the places. Like when you have those options, that's like in jewelry piece. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. We will be making hoops and we don't want to be bothered by that thing behind our ear digging into our neck so we will be doing hinges the easiest hinge ever well i think it's the easiest one you will tell me later because you know i want to have options with my jewelry so sometimes i want to have just hoops and sometimes i want to spice them up with some kind of charm and yeah let's get started and we're starting everything by making hoops for these hinged hoop earrings you can create that by hand as well by taking bigger mandrel and wrapping that wire around with a ring maker it's always easier to do this and i had some spring bags so i used smaller size of diameter and then i changed it with a bigger one and made everything equal because we want those two rings would be the same size. I created more just because I was doing more of the hoops at that time, but we need just two. And we're working with 1.16 millimeter thick D-shaped wire here. And it's kind of common size when you want to create something. So even for a shank ring, I showed you on my last project, I used the same thickness of the wire. Now we're starting to create parts for our hinge. And that hinge we will be making, we're making out of bowls. So that's the easiest part of it because you don't actually need any tubing or I don't know, something like that. We just need a ball and make it flat and solder that on both ends of the hoop. I chose to show you one by one and even create some kind of steps after, but we will come back to solder a second one as well. Now I'm showing you a few ways how to do that. So soldering is always about positioning well. I like to position it that way because I'm like not corrupting any shape of my hoop and I'm just like, trying to stick that with the hoop itself in this way it's way easier to position but we're kind of losing the hoop shape we have to make that fixed after and it is way easier to solder it that way we're keeping the heat on the thickest part which is our hinge part and just like feeding that heat to the hoop if that makes sense and then the solder flows very beautifully and now we need to create a second part of the hinge which we're making out of ball as well for that we're taking 0.8 millimeter thickness of wire and we're melting hammering and filing that shape as we need for our hinge Putting that in a vise truly helps because it always keeps you accurate, you can hold it better. Of course, you could do that on a wooden bench or metal bench as well, but the vise like this truly helps. And now we are marking our place for the file with the saw first, just because our file would have something to grab on and not to slide in all the places while we're working. And file actually making the place for a drill to come in. That drill won't slide away as well. That is like making sure that we are always controlling our work, nothing is slipping around, and that we always like in our work. Not to slip around and be like, you know, very sure what you're doing. And it's very important to lubricate our files and our drills constantly when we are working. And this step, it's truly a process. You want to make sure that you have a good placement for your closuring part. You can use even pliers for correction just to create that tension more, that grabbing aspect more. 
And when you are sure about it, you're drilling your whole piece, not fully, we are drilling with the closure as well, just to mark that dot where we want that closure would be drilled out. And continue to drill through without it. And we're doing the same for our closure. We're doing that slowly because it was made out of ball. It has not fun to drill out aspect, but yeah, we still can drill it. Just be slower. Now we're checking if everything working fine, which it was, and creating the place for a second ball, which we will solder and it will hold our closure after. And now we're soldering the same way as we soldered the first ball. We're flattening that out, positioning and soldering that to our hoop. And making sure that all that temperature is very even where our parts connecting together. And then we will have a beautiful solder joint. And now we're preparing the place for that closure would come in to our flattened ball. So we're flattening the top part as we did with the first one. And then we're going the same with the saw first. And then we will switch that to a file. But this time we're not making a big groove because we're making a groove for 0.8 millimeter wire. And we want to create that groove as if it would be stuck in there, you know? We need that wire to be grabbed and hold there. So we're creating round inside on the end of the groove. And the upper part has to be a bit more narrow than that, that we could just push and get through that narrow point and be hold by a bit bigger placement. So the point here is to create a groove and to create that a bit smaller than our wire itself. I'm pretty sure this drill was 0.7 millimeters. So it's something around that. We need just a bit, bit smaller. If your drilling is not that great, I would say take even smaller drill just because you will be more in control. And to create that catchy holding, we are using a round file here and just twisting around it, just to create that small, tiny round space for our ending to be catched in. And now we're correcting the shape of our ending, just to make that hoop happening and the sound. Yes, that's, that work was for that. <laughs> And when we have everything in place, we are cutting our wire. I found it's easier to do it that way than to measure every time. So for me, it goes that way the best. Now we're correcting a bit of that round placement because my wire wasn't going in because you want to be as fitting as you can. That's why we're switching and coming back to same tools again, just to make it right. Now, this part of twisting around makes it looser a bit because we're creating that burnishing effect and we're making that tight and then we're loosening that a bit just to make it as perfect as it can be. And now it's that hammering part to close everything in place. And now we're having everything in place. Of course, it's like before sanding stage. It looks very good before sanding because either way we are correcting everything with pliers later on if something moves when we're sanding. And for this part, we're using radial discs. I use it just because it helps to planish that a bit more on the hinge place 
because we want that would be smooth. It is important to plenish that all the way in because we're putting that in our ear, our hair can stuck in it. So be aware that you're creating jewelry piece that has to be comfortable to wear, lightweight, and then you will create a beautiful piece and comfortable as well. And after all that polishing, I put these hoops in a tumbler just to make it even more smoother. And voila! Okay, we are done here. We have a beautiful hinge on a hoop, very functional, made with hinges. We can do whatever we want with them, with charm, without charm. Like, when you have those options, that's like a jewelry piece. Write me in the comments what you want to see more on this channel. Maybe ask some questions and I will answer that to you. And I hope you like it. And I will see you in my next one.